we have we have a culture that is filled with broken men like this guy that go out and kill people. Sometimes just one people, sometimes a bunch of people, but they have been spun into insanity by this culture, told that this is what strength looks like, and then sent out there to kill people. So I don't have an answer, but I think the right should probably engage with it since it's a problem on their side. Remember the guy that that drove into that holiday gathering, they still are trying to use that as some sort of attack against the left because they say, hey, did you know that the guy who did it was black and some of the people he killed was white? They think that that's like checkmate. (laughs) This is literally a guy who wrote books about his politics and they will never even acknowledge that that this happened. No. It could not be more clear who this guy was. He talks about how much he loved Trump. The stuff he says is insane about Trump. He seems to believe that Trump values loyalty or something like that. So this guy is obviously insane and has no grasp on reality. But they're not gonna learn anything from this because they don't want to. They want lots and lots of young white men in this country to grow up to be like him. Now, if they could stop them from actually going and doing most of the shootings, they'd probably prefer that. But they definitely want them to follow this guy's model on life all the way up until the guns start firing. If you've seen his profile, as you point out, and I'm not gonna belabor this too long, I promise. But if you've seen the profile that you talked about, the things that he went through and his thought processes and all that, the many right-wingers, they understand that people get built up. You talk about the, the the what amounted to toxic masculinity with him thinking there's this dominance of the male culture that needs to happen and all this. So if you don't think that type of thing is taught and then it, it's nurtured and then it grows in boys that become men like this, then why is it that they're so hell bent on stopping critical race theory in schools? Why is it they want to eliminate certain books from certain libraries so your kids won't learn certain things because it'll affect them maybe? Why is it you don't want them to learn that LGBTQ plus community are humans and that they get to be who they are? So whenever we're pushing back on education about what kids need to know and learn, it's because they don't want them to learn certain things because they know once you get embedded, once things are embedded in your brain, you maybe become a type of person who espouses those beliefs and maybe acts on them. So they think a person is gonna hate the country if they learn about our history and our severely racist history in all of its forms and the details of it. So it's pretty obvious that they would acknowledge that we shouldn't be teaching our young men things like this or exposing them to types of hatred towards other people where they think they have to have a me against the world type of mentality and I gotta go shoot them all. They know that. They know it because they say it happens with critical race theory, which it doesn't, it just educates people. But they don't want the education to go a certain way that'll keep guys like this from being on the streets and doing things like this just because it doesn't really fit their narrative. And they can't win elections like that. They need these types of voters. They just hope they're not gonna kill everybody. Yeah, and and in this case, in addition to him dying, he killed five other people, an absolute tragedy. Um, I mean, it's the sort of tragedy that we just have every couple of days, basically, in the United States. Um, that is itself an additional tragedy. Um, and we just like JR, like we we see this, and we know the people. We we already know. We know if you listen to podcasts, we know what podcasts he listened to. If he ever read a book, we know whose book he bought and then read the first three pages of and then stopped. Like we already know the people that are trying to appeal to these sorts of broken men. So what like? What what are we supposed to do? Like, what's the alternative? Like, I, I is there is there a counter, like push to this? Other people trying to get through to these, not just men that are broken for a variety of reasons, but this movement that is trying to break them so that then they will be theirs. Like, what, are we supposed to do it? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to have to make that be my thing that I try to get through these people. But clearly, there's a lot of them, and it's killing people. And and yeah. Uh, anyway, it's it's just so frustrating to see so much like callous, cruel exploitation of these people, and then turning them into callous and cruel people. Yeah. Okay. By the way, really fast, we also have a number of other mass shootings that have been taking place in Colorado. In March, a gunman killed ten people at a Boulder grocery store, including a police officer. About two months later, a gunman opened fire at a birthday party in Colorado Springs, killing six people before taking his own life. Last month, six teenagers were wounded in a drive-by shooting at a park in the Denver suburb of Aurora. The Gun Violence Archive has counted 687 shootings with four or more people injured or killed just this year. So like if we if we were to do what seems rational and responsible, which is to cover every one of these because every one of these is a disaster. 
that would be the entire show every day, day, every week, every month, every year. That's what it would be, thanks to America and its guns. And if you think about um, what's left over as far as families that lose every day, multiple people lost every day from things like this. They left the house or they're in the house. And that's just the last day that they're around and the family has to deal with that forever. And as you said, this will be every day, every show for the forever. And that's the number of times this happens to people's families permanently. We move on tomorrow, we're not gonna talk about this. We're all the victims are gonna be yeah. feeling this for the rest of their lives. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.